All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Kenny. I'll be uh, going through a feeding today of our microhabitat exhibits here at the aquarium. Um, we'll be working through them uh, slowly, one at a time, kind of giving you a description of the animals that we have inside of each of the exhibits and kind of what type of habitat these exhibits represent. Um, today, I will be feeding uh, some different uh, food sources we have here. Uh, we have, this is something that the aquarists will earlier in the day go and prepare uh, for our animals. And we, it kind of looks like a jumbled mash of uh, squid. That's what we're feeding is squid. And we kind of just cut it up into different sizes. So we have some smaller uh, arms and tentacles cut up um, right here, which we feed to a lot of the smaller fish with the smaller mouths. The general strategy is you feed to the uh, size of the mouth of the animal. Um, here are some uh, cut up arms and tentacles, a little longer. You may recognize these for those of you who like uh, eating calamari. I do too, and, or I used to until I had to prepare this every day for animals. Um, and then here's some rings of our squid as well to the slightly larger fish, uh, mostly the salmon and things you guys have seen later um, in previous videos. So in addition to this, we'll supplement the diets a lot with uh, krill, which you guys can kind of see right here. This is a um, Pacifica krill, a little smaller type of uh, krill, also used to feed the smaller animals we have here. So we'll be doing kind of a little mix of uh, all of these for our animals here today. So. Um, Let's move on to our exhibits and uh, take a look at what we have inside the tanks. Awesome. So the uh, general uh, goal and what we have displayed here is each of these exhibits represent a different kind of um, group in the area in the ecosystem, different group of animals, uh, and usually it's a lot of it's based off of the depth of the environment as well as the kind of the animals that inhabit it. So our first exhibit is our shallowest. This represents kind of the uh, inner tidal, the rocky inner tidal area. Um, we have a lot of these animals. You, got, you can see that they're actually uh, recognizing that they're getting food. We have a lot of gunnels here, uh, penpoint gunnels, crescent gunnels. Um, they're all kind of coming up and checking out the food here. We saw some uh, krill being put in to the uh, exhibit. And um, these animals, we have actually, we'll go tide pooling to collect, to collect a lot of these. We find them out um, when there's usually a really negative tide, like a negative one, negative two. Um, tide here in Seward will actually go out to the low point area, which offers the, really the best tide pooling around um, Seward. And we'll go gently check under rocks, check in little crevices. And these gunnels will be um, living and kind of hiding in that rocky kind of um, tide dependent ecosystem. And uh, in the wild here, these animals will be feeding on small shrimp, amphipods, larger zooplankton, things like that, kind of anchored to the rocks and attached. And as you can see, they're very long and slender, which that allows them to hide and blend in very well with the, uh, the rocky environment that they live. Uh, it might be a little harder to see as well, but there's actually some uh, daisy brittle stars in here and other kind of, oh, there's a little surge. <laughs> so the, uh, what's neat about this tank is it actually will, the water level will rise and then it will uh, surge down, um, kind of just mimicking like a wave came in to the uh, inner tidal, um, like you'd find in the wild. So you can see there's some brittle stars tucked in here with their arms kind of reaching out from under the rocks. They're more of the filter feeding type animals. And um, now that there's no more food in the exhibit here, all of our gunnels have kind of tucked back into the, uh, to the rocks and they're kind of hiding away. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, uh, this yellowish gunnel right here. They will actually, uh, they'll do a really good job of mimicking their environment with color and uh, being able to blend in. So this crescent gunnel, you can see he's kind of almost the same color as the rocks as he's tucking in right there, 
kind of hard to see. And a good way to identify them is they'll have these saddles, these basically these stripes along the back of their body right there. So you can see these nice black stripes and they'll have almost like a slash, a black slash that'll run through their eye. So a little um, good way to identify those critters. So um, good, good feeding right here of the uh, first microhabitat. Looks like all the gunnels got some food and then they tucked back into the rocks to hide, um, just like they would in the wild, waiting for the uh, next tide to come through. Um, these animals kind of cool as well. They'll usually lay their eggs in these rocky little caves and they'll guard them, um, which is not super common in fish. They'll actually guard them until they hatch uh, in these little crevices that they're living in right here, you can see. Um, awesome. So, we're going to head on over to our microhabitat number two, our second one here. Um, this is actually my favorite microhabitat, uh, just because it represents a really, really important uh, ecosystem here uh, in, in Resurrection Bay and basically everywhere. And that's our kind of our shallow, um, eelgrassy type nursery area where lots of juvenile fish will. Uh, recruit and grow before they're able to make their way out to the wild, um, kind of the bigger ocean, more predators. The eelgrass right here, which you guys can see that's anchored into the sandy bottom, is really good, uh, important habitat for lots of fish like um, pipefish or little tube snouts or s different crabs and other critters as they hide and blend in with the environment. Um, there's actually, you might not get a good view of it, but there's a really cool decorator crab that's actually way in the back right there. It's, uh, he's kind of hidden uh, a lot by the eelgrass, but um, decorator crabs, if you don't get a good view now, we'll see another one in uh, our eighth microhabitat, but they will actually grab things like algae or pieces like sticks and actually stick them on the back of their shell and attach them so they're kind of camouflaged and blend in a little easier and harder to find for predators. Um, my actual personal favorite animal that we have in here is if you guys can see up here at the top, this is our uh, hooded nudibranch or our melaby. And like I said, this is a, a species of nudibranch, um, which you got, which you can kind of see right here. And what's really cool about this nudibranch is it's actually feeding right now. So earlier in the day, I put in a, a couple squirts of uh, artemia or brine shrimp, which are kind of swimming around right here, floating in the current around this melaby. And they're basically just really, really teeny shrimp that a lot of our smaller filter feeding animals will go after and eat. And this melaby, they basically have a um, kind of a, a, a mouth, a foot, and then this large uh, bell right here. And this bell, you can actually see it's closed right now. It'll open and close and kind of trap all their prey um, that they're, they're hunting. You can see here it's opening up and they have these, these um, projections here on the side that they'll actually use to trap and here it's closing up trapping all that brine shrimp, bringing it to its mouth and eating it. And um, that was really cool to see it actually feeding right now. So these melabees, um, they typically in the winter time, will, you'll find them uh, in more of the eelgrass bed type environment. In the summer, they'll actually be floating more uh, in the open water near the surface. Um, that's actually where we found this um, nudibranch he was floating on the surface over in a humpy cove here in Resurrection Bay. And we actually just caught him right from the surface um, with a bucket while we were uh, at, on a dive, which is pretty neat. So they can, they can be found in large aggregations, usually attached to a stalk of kelp or um, a piece of algae on the bottom. And there'll be hundreds of these hooded nudibranchs attached uh, and giving it kind of a white appearance. The, uh, they're actually really good swimmers as well. They'll actually kind of undulate their body a little bit and be able to uh, kind of cruise along in the water column, which is pretty neat to see. So 
He's, the nudibranch's still feeding away, um, getting lots of brine shrimp, bringing it in, into its mouth. Really cool feeding mechanism. Hope everybody got a good view of that. Um, we, we, uh, looks like we did a good job of feeding this exhibit as well, so we'll move over to our um, next microhabitat. We'll go here to microhabitat number three. And uh, we'll take a look at it. At, uh, first, at first appearance, this microhabitat may appear a little bland, but it's actually one of, actually it's one of my favorites as well. Um, this microhabitat represents kind of the sandy, muddy bottom. And that may seem relatively boring, but the majority of our bay here, especially near the Sea Life Center, because we're at the kind of the beginning of an alluvial fan. And look, here, here are some, um, some flatfish right here, which you could barely see uh, from the, looking at the exhibit until they moved. They're, they're kind of the exact same color as the gravel that they're in. And there's actually four little flatfish kind of tucked in here, hiding um, in, the, in the gravel. You can see them moving around, and they'll actually go up and grab some of that. Uh, looks like there's some shrimp, um, some shrimp and some uh, squid tentacles mixed in there as well. So what these animals are actually uh, next to are these sea pens. So the sea pens are these large kind of orange looking. They look like a, uh, a quill pen, which is where they get their name from. And they're actually a cnidarian, so the same phylum as a, a jelly, so they have stinging cells or nematocysts. And the nematocysts are kind of the, the frill-like projections you see um, along the stalk, and that's what they'll use to actually filter feed and trap their prey. Um, they usually live in areas with a little bit of current, so there's plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton moving by, and they're able to trap that. The uh, sea pens will have a foot as well, and the foot is actually um, tucked into the gravel or the sand right here, and it'll anchor them down in the bottom. We've actually, we found these sea pens right off of the Sea Life Center, actually scuba diving, um, relatively shallow, around 50 um, feet is where you start to encounter these animals, and they're in the soft, muddy bottom anchored by that foot. Whenever there's a predator or some animal that comes by, they'll actually retract and they'll, they'll basically be hiding and you won't be able to see them so you'd have no idea they were there. So if you go carefully along the bottom, moving very slowly, you'll start to see all these sea pens and if you go even deeper, you'll start seeing sea whips um, anchored in the, the gravel here along with all these little um, flatfish tucked in here as well. So, this ecosystem, like I said, is a pretty indicative of what it's like off the Sea Life Center. If you were to look um, off of like Lowell Point Road or even like 4th of July across the bay, the nice muddy, uh, sandy bottoms. Similar to here, once you get out of this area, um, past Fox Island is where you start seeing a little more rocky habitats, which will lead us to our uh, next microhabitat, microhabitat number four. And uh, microhabitat number four right here, like I said, makes that transition from the muddy, kind of sandy ecosystems moving further out in the bay where you start seeing some rocky reefs. And uh, this habitat, we have some rocks here, coralline covered, that red algae you see giving it that nice bright color. There's not too many uh, fish, fish inhabitants. We have a long fin sculpin right over here. Um, but this habitat does have a lot of green urchins and you can see these green urchins right here. These, uh, these urchins are primarily our grazers here. They'll eat the, lots of kelp, lots of algae. So you'll see them in similar habitats to our, uh, the uh, kelp foresty area. Um, and they are, there's also some anemones here. These are some uh, plumose anemones. So these are filter feeding ones. There's a, a lot of these rocky reef habitats. There'll be walls of these plumose anemones um, and large aggregations, um, usually in areas of high current, lots of things moving by. So they're, uh, they're good habit. This is a good, great habitat for some little different type of animals as we're seeing here. 
our long fin sculpin still down here. And um, one of the things that we're looking for when we're feeding, as you can see, is making sure everybody got some food. So we want to, I actually didn't see the, uh, maybe we could have a little more, little more krill in this tank. Uh, I didn't see that long fin sculpin get any food, but um, just want to make sure everybody's getting plenty here, which is good to see. So kind of a little um, more rocky habitat here. Uh, and it's a great transition to our next uh, exhibit as well, which is um, pretty similar. This one has a little more, little more color to it. Um, the kind of the main, the main uh, character in this tank is our grunt sculpin. So I don't know if we can get a good view of our grunt sculpin. He's uh, yeah, the perfect. He's tucked in the back. Grunt sculpin are actually my favorite fish we have here at the Sea Life Center. They are, uh, they're small, but they're in really incredible the way they've adapted and how they survive. They, they can't swim very well. They'll actually have, he's, he's moving, so he's not doing a good job of modeling, but uh, <laughs> he's more interested in food than uh, listening to me. But they'll actually have modified pectoral fins, the fins on the sides of the fish. They'll actually have these nice long rays and these kind of rigid rays they have on these fins allow them to almost actually walk along on the bottom. And you got a good view right there of him actually kind of crawling along. And the, their main, the way that their lifestyle is, they'll actually be pretty cryptic, pretty kind of hiding in the, the background. They'll actually look like a large barnacle. They'll, that's why we have lots of barnacles in this tank, lots of acorn barnacles. They can actually tuck inside of the, um, the barnacle and completely camouflage. They have a large, kind of a longer snout you can see in the front right here, and their face is pretty armored, so they are very, very hard to see. Um, normally they're found in areas with lots of current, lots of surge. Um, near the Cape, Cape Resurrection, there's large walls covered with barnacles, and that's where we find a lot the majority of these um, grunt sculpins because they're anchored in those areas, um, picking off lots of uh, larger shrimp, lots of amphipods, um, little bigger critters with that long snout. And uh, what's cool about these animals as well is the, uh, the grunt sculpins. Um, the female uh, will actually trap the male in a little hole or crevice and she'll actually lay her eggs and then she'll she won't let the male escape until he fertilizes those eggs, um, which is pretty neat. And then he'll actually stay there and guard them, um, which is very unusual in fish, until those eggs hatch. And he'll actually take them and spit them out of his mouth, breaking the uh, shell or the casing of the egg uh, until they are a hatched larval, and then they're on their own. So really cool lifestyle for these guys. And Seems like he's got his fill with food, so he'll probably head back to our barnacle covered. Um, oh, there's another one up here too. You can see right here at the top, another um, grunt sculpin. And in one of our exhibits, we've actually had the grunt sculpin um, lay eggs and they've actually hatched. And we've gotten a few larval um, grunt sculpins out recently, which is really, really neat and kind of exciting news here. So we got two kind of cruising around and they're all kind of blending into these strawberry anemones, um, these, these small anemones. Most of them are tucked up in here. Another animal that's found commonly in that really surgy, um, fast-moving water environment with our um, mu barnacles and mussels kind of tucked in there as well. So definitely animals you have to uh, take a few take a glance at, make sure they're, to be able to find them, they're really hidden, tough to see. But one of the coolest animals, I think, they don't get too much larger than what we're seeing right here, um, relatively small, but um, definitely hard to see and quite the neat animal kind of cruising around. So they get their name um, as well because they'll actually kind of uh, emit a grunting noise by rubbing parts of their body together. And when they're, if they're lifted out of water or anything. So um, another cool fact about these grunt sculpins. So 
We'll move on to our next microhabitat. Um, microhabitat number six over here. And uh, these next two, we're actually moving a little deeper, a um, little deeper down. The lighting's changed a little bit. Um, in this microhabitat, it's actually pretty tough to see, but uh, one of the coolest crabs we actually have here uh, in Alaska, uh, he's tucked in under this rocky ledge right here. This is our scaled crab, and some food's starting to fall down, so he might actually come out of that cave, but um, there you go, get a nice good view on him. So the scaled crab, they're actually a relatively large crab. Um, they are... The way you can identify these guys is they get their name from the scaled like uh, look or projections along their legs. They kind of look like they have little bars along them. And their claws are actually on the underside, they're flat. So they don't have that dramatic jagged look of many crabs. Um, but however, they can pinch very, very strongly, pretty, uh, very well. Their main food source is usually echinoderms, so sea stars, um, and especially brittle stars. They'll go after those um, fairly, uh, very voraciously. So the, uh, these guys are typically found um, relatively shallow to around 400 feet deep. So we found these guys on a lot of walls here. Uh, we found some off the Sea Life Center, off some of the old railroad um, debris and pier pilings. So really cool animal. Um, tucked in here at the bottom. And what's cool about these scaled crabs as well is they usually will have um, some sort of symbiotic relationship with anemones, especially, oh, there we go. He's kind of moving out now, saying hi. Oh, and there's, he's eating some, eating some squid. You can see him grab, he grabbed some squid and brought it into his, uh, to his mouth right there and it's kind of chomping away. But they'll actually um, kind of hide out uh, underneath uh, lots of uh, like plumose or crimson anemones and use that as kind of shelter, especially when they're a little smaller. Um, so he's moving, good view right here. I think he was actually eating a rock, so he got a little confused. <laughs> but <laughs> we all make mistakes, it's all right. <laughs> so he'll find, he'll find his food. Um, that's why we actually have these anemones in here is they kind of similar habitat to um, the crab and I'll use them for protection. The, uh, the anemones will eat lots of the food that'll sink down, that'll get blown by the current um, that the crab won't get to, but he's a pretty um, voracious eater as well. So uh, really cool to see that. Let's uh, move on to our next microhabitat. So this microhabitat is definitely uh, represents our deepest ecosystem, microhabitat number seven. Um, this one, you're not going to see a lot of movement in here. Uh, this is kind of more of the, the awe factor for our animals. Um, one of the coolest animals we have here, I think personally, really beautiful looking, very delicate. These are basket stars right here. Um, they're getting some krill. You can actually see uh, these are some echinoderms as well. Um, they're hook-like projections actually grabbing and um, kind of re reaching at some of that krill and trapping it. They'll actually secrete a mucousy membrane between those hooks on their arms and trap um, zooplankton and other things that, that float by. These, um, these basket stars, inhibit, I mean, live in very deep water. So we've actually, if people will catch these um, doing the trawl surveys, or if you have really deep uh, traps, like uh, crab traps, a um, couple hundred feet down is when you'll find these guys. Uh, we've had these two uh, basket stars for a very long time, actually. They were previously in our skate exhibit uh, downstairs. Uh, we moved them up here not too long ago just to kind of exhibit how interesting they are on their own. Um, their mouth's on the underside of these animals, so they'll actually bring the food and uh, bring it to the bottom where their mouth's located and eat it from there. You can see that they're all kind of tucked up and uh, kind of working away right now. Um, 
We'll feed these guys kind of the same diet as uh, everything else, give them some mashed up krill, um, occasionally some brine too, just like we saw for our melody, but um, really neat to see, and they're kind of all curled up and tough looking. Uh, lots of, if you see videos of lots of deep sea animals or kind of uh, lot videos of deep areas, you'll see hundreds of these carpeted at the bottom. And if you go to areas like uh, Smitty's Cove and Whittier, um, a great spot to see these guys, usually around 100 feet. Uh, and they're kind of hooked onto a lot of the sea whips, which you'll see um, kind of long sticking out of the, the muddy bottom. Um, great area to find these guys and kind of cool to see them eat as well. They'll typically live on muddy bottoms here. Uh, we give them a little kind of broken up uh, pieces of barnacle just to add a little color, a little pop to them, but um, really neat animals overall. So let's move on to our uh, last microhabitat, microhabitat number eight. And uh, it may be number eight, but it's certainly not least, all right? There's a lot of cool animals in here. Um, this one, we'll, we'll probably see some more stuff come out once there's some food put in. There's actually a, uh, we have a decorator crab right here in the middle. It's actually uh, kind of a rude decorator crab because it's sitting right on top of a sea cucumber and an anemone, so. I got a bone to pick with you after this talk, buddy, but that's all right. Um, you can see him trying to grab some uh, krill that's floating by. Um, really good view. He's actually got some sponges growing on the back of his uh, carapace or his shell. So like we were saying earlier, they'll use those uh, to actually camouflage and blend in, making it difficult to actually see these animals. So he was kind of grabbing at some of the krill that floated by um, su somewhat successfully. <laughs> um, another kind of arthropod or animal related to our um, decorated crab, the bottom right side of the tank right here, we have our rhinoceros crab. This guy has, uh, he's got some really cool, nice bright colors here orange on the back of his shell. He's tucked in under this rock. Um, good way to identify these guys is they have these almost hair-like projections on the side of their, their legs and their, uh, their claws. They'll usually kind of tuck into, um, into little rocky crevices or on barnacle-covered walls, making them hard to spot and actually um, get out of those areas for predators. And they do a really good job of blending in. And you can see him eat a lot of the food that kind of floated down to the bottom right there. So uh, really good, kind of cool guy. They can grow um, a little bigger than this. I'd say about um, five or four inches across. So he's kind of a medium sized one right here, eating some of the food. Um, other critters we have in this tank is we have some more green urchins, which we talked about earlier, kind of our grazers eating uh, kelp and other algae, and we have some um, crimson and Christmas anemones tucked in the back right here. That's what that decorator crab's sitting on right there. More filter feeding um, type um, animals, very common in our rocky uh, kelp forest type habitat. So Cool to see that. We got a lot of the, sh the food sinking down right now. Um, lots of different animals in this tank, and uh, they luckily all right now get along, which is good. So we, um, awesome job with the feeding here. That was awesome. We uh, pretty much done the uh, looking at the animals today. If uh, you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to type them into the, um, the box there. and we'll do our best to answer them. So no questions. I, uh, next time I'll be a little more exciting, I guess. <laughs> um, awesome.